Hey, it's Noel Powell from Creation Effects, and this is the tutorial for using the black hole template for Adobe After Effects. This template will allow you to quickly create a high quality custom animation of a black hole, and it has several looks to choose from. There's this main effect with this disk of matter orbiting the black hole, and you can see the disk is curved, and it is real 3D, so you can move your camera around and view it at different angles. You can see it has some clouds that kind of orbit around the disk, and also it's warping the light in the background around the black hole. And if you want, you can easily hide the disk in clouds and just have the warping to get this kind of effect. And a different look that's also included is this 3D funnel, so you can use whatever star or nebula image that you want, and the stars will get sucked down into the hole. All of these effects can be easily customized with the controls, which there are a lot of, so it's very flexible, and uh, you can adjust every element to your liking. And last but not least, the comps for all of the animations that you've been watching are included in the template. And I should mention that this black hole effect is part of a series of space effects. I already did Terra for making Earth animations, and there's Solaris for making realistic sun animations. And then all three templates, along with a bunch of other space effects like the planets, a galaxy, our solar system, a nebula, all of it will be included in a package deal which I'll probably just call Space Effects uh, because I've been working on it for months and by this point I'm fresh out of creativity. Alright, so let's open up After Effects and have a look at the black hole. Uh, real quick, after you download the zip file, you can right click it and choose the Extract All option in Windows and that will ensure that you don't get uh, a missing files error in After Effects. I'm on a Mac so I'll just double click it and then if you're in After Effects 2024 or later, open the blackhole.aep file. If you're using a version of AE from 2019 to 2023, open this other project. They're identical except that this older one is missing the particle effect that creates the clouds orbiting the black hole. So we have a couple main comps here. Uh, here's the one with that funnel effect, uh, but most people will open this one with a disk. So this is kind of a, a blank slate for making your own animation. All the settings are at their default. But uh, if you want something similar to one of the clips in the promo video, all of those comps are in this folder here. So these can be a, a starting point for a new animation, or you could uh, just add a title to them and render. Uh, it, it might take a few hours to render your clip, um, but the black hole in Interstellar took a team of 30 people to make it, and it took 100 hours to render each frame, so I don't feel too bad. But anyway, you can use these however you want. Uh, just don't upload these animations as stock footage because I've already done that. And I should mention that all of these comps are 4K resolution, and you can change them to HD or any other resolution in the Composition Settings panel, and uh, the effects will work the same. No need to change the resolution of any pre-comps, um, but you will need to change the resolution of this one solid layer uh, for the afterglow effect. Just select the layer, go to the layer menu, and choose solid settings, and then change the resolution to match your comp. Anyway, back in our main comp, uh, notice we have this instructions layer at the top, which we can unhide for some general info. And also, some of these layers have these layer comments here, so we can find additional information or instructions in there for that particular layer. And if we select the second layer, called Black Hole Control Layer, that's where you'll find all the customization controls in the Effect Controls panel. And you can see they're grouped into categories. Uh, I'll give an overview of these in a moment, but let me briefly talk about how the effect is made and what all these layers are. All the way at the bottom, we have a 3D cube that surrounds your entire scene. It's huge. So this is how we get that 360 degree background uh, so that you can move your camera all around and, and always see outer space in the background. Each side of the cube is the same image and you can change that image if you double click one of the layers. And that opens up the pre-comp and then you can unhide any of the images in here or drag in your own image if you want. If you want to scale or maybe rotate the cube, uh, you can see that all six sides are parented to this layer named background cube control layer. So you can scale or move or rotate uh, the, this control layer to affect the entire cube. 
Above that is this adjustment layer. Uh, you can add effects or color correction to your background on here. Um, I have some effects on here that, that darken the background, and I'll show you why that's needed in a minute. Next we have the black hole. It says sphere, but that uh, is a total lie. It's just a 2D black circle. Um, and it has auto orientation on so that it always faces the camera. So basically it has the same effect as a sphere. And this photon sphere is just, uh, you know, like a thin ring, just like any photon spheres you keep at home. Um, it's got some fractal noise on it to give it some texture. And it also has uh, auto orientation on, so it's always aligned with the black hole. Next is the disk underside, and you can see that this spins. Uh, this effect is made in a pre-comp, and we can open that up, and nothing happens. Because all of the effects are being controlled by essential properties back in, in the main comp. So you probably won't need to ever open up that pre-comp or uh, any of the pre-comps uh, in this pre-comps folder, except to change your background image. All right, I'll come back to this black outer edge. Uh, let me solo all of these disc layers. So this spinning disc has a, a 3D curve to it, which that's uh, not normal for After Effects. Uh, I actually used a free tool called Layer Bender to do this. If you go to the, the freebies page of creationeffects.com, you can pick up your free copy there, and uh, it'll let you bend or curve layers in 3D. And it does this by breaking it up into a bunch of connected segments like this. All of these segments are parented to the first segment, the control layer. So if you need to move or rotate the whole thing, you can just move this layer. And you'll also notice there's some controls here, um, but I recommend you, you just ignore these. Uh, I put all the controls that I think you might need on the main control layer up here. Next we have a, a couple clouds layers made from a fractal noise effect with a CC cylinder effect applied to it. So there are two cylinders with different radiuses to give, to give it some depth. And there's some turbulent displace on there to warp it a little. Uh, you can customize these on the main control layer as well. And right above that is another option for clouds uh, that have a different look. Um, you'll need to unhide the layer first and then you might not see it until you have the afterglow layer turned on as well. Uh, these are made from CC ball action, which is a particle effect. And there are no controls for this effect on the control layer, uh, so you can customize it with these controls on, on the clouds layer itself. You may need to adjust the size of the particles depending on how close your camera is. And uh, then pay attention to this pixel motion blur effect, uh, which will make it a lot smoother and softer like clouds. And then up here is the afterglow layer, which adds the glow and also some color to the entire thing. So you can customize this using the controls on this afterglow layer. If you've ever used the standard glow effect, these controls will be familiar. Uh, this is just a much more intense glow with a much larger fall off. And this afterglow effect is also a free download from creationeffects.com. So you can go and download it for free anytime and install it. And then you can just start using this in place of the standard glow effect because it's a lot better. The only thing I'll, I'll point out in these controls, um, this first group of controls are the most important, but also pay attention to these large glow controls down here, which is how you get the really large faint glow. Okay, on the black hole control layer, uh, to see all the things you can do, I recommend you just play with the controls. Uh, if you want a description of what all the controls are for, you can read the comments on this layer. I'll just go over a few things here. Uh, you can move the entire black hole here, uh, but I recommend you just leave it in the center of the scene if you can, and just move your camera. Then this scale control, you can see uh, it's at about 50% scale, except it's at 60% on the z-axis to sort of exaggerate this horizontal part that's sticking out. Uh, if you want to move your camera in for a close-up, you can set these values to 100%. Uh, that would be full resolution, which is about 6,000 pixels wide and 5,000 tall. This dim background layer, uh, that it makes your background image darker, which is necessary because of the afterglow layer. 
The afterglow effect works by adding a glow to the brightest parts of the scene. So unless you want the background to glow like this disc, you need to dim it a little. These background warping controls affect the CC flow motion effect down here on the background warping layer. If all you want is warping, uh, you don't want the disc or anything, you can just hide all the layers above that background warping layer. So you can control the size of the warp with these controls. And then there's some other controls to adjust the size of the black circle. Uh, you don't want to make the circle too big because it will cover up some of the interesting things happening in this warp ring here. Uh, you, you'll see it when you play it back. Some of these stars are moving this way and other stars are moving the other way. So keep that in mind. And I should mention to get the movement in the warp, either the, the camera or the background needs to be moving because light needs to be passing behind the warp effect. All right, a little further down in the accretion disk form section of controls, uh, we have some controls for the outer black edge. That's this layer that I skipped over earlier. It's just a, uh, a black shape that sits right underneath this lip of the disk. And it creates this shadowy area underneath. And why is there a shadowy area, you ask? Well, look it up, because I have no idea. But I studied a lot of black hole simulations, and it was there. So you can adjust the size and position here, or uh, you can just move the layer directly if you need to. I don't think I need to go over anything else here. You can read the layer comments. So let's just have a quick look at the funnel comp. I'll open that up. This comp uses a technique called camera projection mapping to project the star image onto this 3D funnel shape. Uh, I can reveal that shape if I turn on preview mode here on our black hole control layer. Again, I used the free layer bender tool to make this curved funnel. Um, I actually made this for another template called Infinite Horizon where I was playing with whirlpool effects. Anyway, here's a very brief description of what's going on here. Uh, we have this spotlight layer that's somewhere above our funnel, shining down on it. And right in front of the spotlight, just 100 pixels away, is our footage, which is this layer. And our footage is scaled way down, like 5%. And the light from the spotlight shines through it, and it projects the image onto our funnel. So now we can orbit our camera around and view it from different angles, and it looks 3D. Just don't go down too far, or we'll see the back of these layers. And uh, to change this image, you can double-click the footage pre-comp and unhide one of these star images or drag in your own. And I don't think you'll need to change the shape of the funnel, but if you want to play with it, you can uh, using these controls here on this screen control layer. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's some white lines here uh, when I'm in half resolution. You'll want to look at it in full resolution to make sure that they're really there. But if you still see lines, uh, I have this control, offset Z position, and that shifts the segments to get rid of the lines. Uh, but you don't want to overdo that. And as for these uh, straight edges here, these, these are really bad. Um, the solution I came up with after testing out all the different distort effects that come with After Effects. The best one is the CC Smear effect. And the effect is on this layer here named Adjustment Layer. Um, I have it off by default because if you were to move the camera, this effect will distort the wrong area. But in the camera's default position, if I turn on this effect, um, it curves that straight edge a little bit. And you can adjust the position and radius of that warping uh, with these properties. Just remember that if your camera is moving, you'll have to keyframe this effect to move with the funnel uh, if you don't want to see any of those straight edges. And then this is the last thing I'll show you. Uh, let me preview it. Notice how all this stuff is spinning and falling down the hole. Uh, that's done with some keyframes on the control layer. So you can hit the U key shortcut to reveal the keyframes, and uh, then you can adjust the duration or speed of that movement. All right, that's all I have to say about black holes. Uh, again, you can find this effect in the larger package called Space Effects. That will be a better deal. And uh, if you want to upgrade and just pay the difference, I can do that. Uh, just send me a message. 
And be sure to pick up the free effects that you saw in this tutorial. There's the afterglow preset for a better glow effect and the layer bender template for bending or curving layers in 3D. And if you poke around the site, you'll see some awesome and unique effects there for Adobe After Effects. Landscaper is a new one. It lets you create your own landscape animations with water and nature effects and an automatic sky and lighting. Or the Creation Trippy Effects template lets you add trippy, psychedelic looks to your footage. Or you can also make mesmerizing, trippy animations with it. There's a shapeshift template for making unique 3D transition effects for your videos. There's creation title effects. Uh, that one comes with 200 unique titles that you can customize. Or the popular flocks template that lets you make custom flocks of birds uh, for compositing on your shots. And the most downloaded thing on the site is another freebie. It's creation lens flares. And it lets you add custom lens flare effects to your shots. Just go to the freebies page at creationeffects.com and you can download it. No strings attached. That's it guys. Uh, good luck on your animations and thanks for watching.